Hi, I'm Wendy Dubo. I'm a senior research scientist at the National Center for Women and in Information Technology, and I'm the director of evaluation. In this module, I'm going to talk to you about gearing up to enact change in your program, department, or institution. Change is a journey, not a single act. So it takes planning and patience, like any journey. Before you start your journey, you need to identify where you want to go. In this case, what are the parts of your department or college or classrooms that you want to change to increase diversity in your computing majors? Once you know where you're going, you can then pack appropriately for your trip. On any trip, you know you'll need certain things, like clothes and toiletries. In this case, you know you'll need data and support from others, but you won't know which data and which others will be best to have along until you've identified your goals and your targets. You may be aware of these NCWIT resources by the numbers and the NCWIT scorecard. They provide all kinds of interesting statistics on the national state of women in computing. NCWIT pulls together key data points that can help you make the case for the lack of diversity by showing the stark underrepresentation of women and people of color in computing. You can use these compiled statistics in your presentations, proposals, and reports. And you can supplement these data with your own. How does your degree attainment by historically underrepresented students stack up against the national average? We talk more about data, particularly your departmental data, in a companion slide deck called The Importance of Data. This whole module also has an accompanying Google Doc that guides you through your data collection. I encourage you to look at it. Getting support from others is key. In NCWIT's decade plus of working with academic departments, we've seen that certain kinds of support are the most effective. This is particularly important when it comes to team constellations. So on your team, we recommend having faculty member or members who have the respect of their colleagues, tenured is best, so they won't be putting their careers at risk by participating, a person who can influence teaching assignments, such as an associate chair for undergraduates or the curriculum committee chair, an academic advisor. It can also be helpful to have access to someone who can assist with certain tasks, such as a graduate assistant or an administrative assistant. And don't forget other offices on campus that can provide invaluable support. We think of institutional research, admissions, advising, a diversity office, if you have that, communications, especially those who make marketing materials or webmaster, maybe even other academic departments with similar challenges and interest in recruiting and retaining underrepresented students. And also be on the lookout for other synergistic activities on campus. Social science research has identified seven conditions that facilitate departmental change. Don't be alarmed by the different sizes of these cogs in this um, system. I don't think the size is really significant. Uh, first, I'll talk about dissatisfaction with the status quo. To motivate action, you can call attention to the problem. And in that way, you'll have a chance to communicate an appealing vision of a better future. And then empowerment. Consider the obstacles that could get in your way and how they can be overcome. Then figure out ways to get folks to agree and feel empowered in doing so. Resources. Change does not happen without cost. Without sufficient time and some money, it's just not likely to succeed. When diversity efforts replace other forms of de departmental service, though, faculty are better able to devote the necessary time. This is connected with rewards. Incentives help co encourage cooperation with change. For sustained change, accountability should be embedded in the structure of your department somehow. Participation. Broad engagement across your department reduces resistance to change. When people engage in planning and implementing change, they feel ownership and then they're less likely to impede change efforts. Leadership. 
Visible high level and external endorsement and support helps to ensure that you make progress towards your goals. And then the smallest cog on here, but certainly not the least important, is the change agent. This is probably you. If it's not, then you should identify a champion to guide the change effort. Even though change is not up to one person at all and won't succeed very well if it is just one person, it is very helpful to have an, a leader and a point person. While you may be convinced that having a wider diversity of people involved in the creation and building of technology is important, as you've probably already discovered, not everyone is. Sometimes even those with good intentions who are on board may not be open to making changes to the status quo. So like it or not, it's incumbent upon you to convince others that change is important and that they can do it without losing anything that is important. You'll need to convince them that in fact there's something to be gained. You need to be a superhero of persuasive communication. Research suggests that change agents um, can do these six things and, and they will be more successful. I've mentioned a couple of them already. Generating dissatisfaction with the status quo and presenting a clear vision of a change that would improve conditions. Those are um, important ways to set up the framework. It's also important to align the change with departmental values. Build confidence in your department's ability to enact the change. Talk to individuals and build their individual confidence and then confidence and then build kind of a team effort approach. Make sure to have your colleagues participate in decisions and sh help shape the change process. And of course, it's also important to enroll critical opinion leaders. You want to get powerful voices on your side. You, as an individual, may be at the center of making these changes, at least at first. So it's super important to establish your and your team's credibility. Frame your goals in connection to what you know your department's goals are. Share compelling evidence for making change and for where you can get to with those changes and for the fact that others have done it too. If you go on NCWET's website and look for the next awards, there are a lot of great examples of departments that have made really significant change and that can be encouraging for others. When you talk one-on-one -on -one with people, connect emotionally with them. If they're infuriated with the status quo, then you can be too. But if they're complacent or blissfully unaware, unaware, being angry may or may not help convince them. Finally, if you can get external attention from press or others on campus for the efforts you're undertaking, that will help bring more attention to the issues in your department. Now I encourage you to go through the other sections in this module to get more comfortable being a change agent. Good luck out there.